when it comes to my job search, my career search this past two years because of the pandemic and everything, right? So companies were going through the digital transformation and uh, digitization. You can call it whatever you want. I've always seen this coming, even before it happened. Uh, and then it happened. I'm like, yeah, you see, I told you so. <laughs> I was one of those industry leaders that, that kind of saw that happening as a thought leader, not industry leader, sorry. Um, so one thing that I've experienced this past year looking for a job in the tech industry is that now I did have a job previously working customer service, you know, kind of like it was at the height of the pandemic and everybody needed a job. So whatever job comes along, you know, nobody's complaining, right? So at the time I, I had a job, so uh, stable income. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to continue looking for a better job while I was on that, that job. <laughs> so, um, but the problem was I through observation, personal observation, and obviously there, there is a trend about it as well. And the local uh, news, the local newspaper did a coverage on that story as well. And it's something that's happening across across industries. <laughs> um, so obviously everybody's situation is different. I can't really speak for others, right? But for myself, I have always been a, a generalist when it comes to tech. I am pretty good at many things, but I am okay. I'm stronger in a few things, but you notice I can't. I can't tell. I can't say that I'm a. I specialize in something <laughs> because I don't really have a specialization. I'm still a pretty all rounded person, but I am stronger in a few things. But I'm generally very good at many things. Uh, but with that, you know, even with my 17, 18 years of work experience right now. When I'm applying for a job in the tech industry, you know, and to be fair, I actually even went ahead to apply for junior positions. Like I'm not maybe not fresh grad positions, lah, but I did apply for junior positions where junior exec positions, meaning those that have been working for a few years, right? A company that's trying to hire somebody to fill a say a senior web developer role, a senior UI developer role. Those are junior exec positions. So I even set up applications for that. But when I do get an opportunity for an interview, the interviewer would ask me, like, why did you not have you what other positions have you applied for? Now I'll be very honest, I did apply for lead related roles, lead roles, being a leader, lead leading a team, like you know. And then uh yeah, so lead roles, uh, yeah, and junior roles, whatever. So some companies would then, you know, sometimes when you're on a call with an individual, in this case, we are all on a virtual call, virtual conference. Sometimes it's not about what they say. Sometimes they even they don't even say anything, but it's the way they react to your answer that, Gives you that impression like they think that there is something wrong with you. Like there will be maybe it's an expression or something that like like why does this guy why why is this guy this guy has 17 years experience in the industry? Why is he applying for a junior position? There must be something wrong with him. So if this happened once or twice, I can, you know, close one eye and, and just not think too much about it. But when I start to see that this is also a pattern and it's happening to other people and not just me, and then it happens to me more than a few times, it becomes a pattern. It's a trend. And I can't help but feel really offended by it. And so I, I went on LinkedIn recently and I threw out this question to recruiters and companies alike. And I, I was furious. I was upset. I was obviously like pissed off like, I was telling them, I was telling companies like, you know, if you're watching, I'm going to highlight this part of the video. If you're watching this video, right, my question is, you guys are complaining that you can't find talents. Everybody needs to digitize. Everybody is going through digital transformation. Companies are trying to fill gaps in their, their technical departments. 
So they were saying like, we need people to fill these roles. We need to hire this, this person, that talent. We need to hire this and that, this and that. And then they all complained that there's not enough talent. There are so many positions that just go unfilled. Then when people like me come in to say, okay, fine, you have this position available. I have the experience. Although, you know, I probably have way more experience than, than is required, but I do have the experience. And I'm willing to take a lower salary to join your company, to, to, to uh, work in your company. And then the companies themselves will be like, no, you know what? I don't want to hire you. Uh, it's okay, you know. Uh, we 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 are not gonna uh, we're gonna reject your application uh, because we we think that you are too qualified. You are overqualified and for this role. I mean, like seriously, guys, you you are complaining that you can't find people to fill the role, and when somebody wants to fill the role, you say no to them. Are you stupid or what? You know. So it really baffles me. I I, I cannot understand why some companies would do that. To applicants that are looking for a job. You know, it's not that there's something wrong. You know, if if the times are okay right now, if the times are ideal, you know, like 2019, before the pandemic even came, my last job offer, which unfortunately I said no to, I, I talked about this before, it's my regret. In 2019, I was in the middle of a career search. In 2019, I was in the midst of a career switch. I've been in the midst of a career switch for a few years before the pandemic struck. So I wasn't uh, I was moving on from tech and going to STEAM education, right? So that that is where my calling is. I still is, I hope. <laughs> so I wanted to get into that, but uh pandemic came and all the plans went to shit. Um so that at that point in time, someone, a recruiter came to me and said, hey, I have this position from a company that is looking to hire a UX manager. And at that point in time, they were offering me $12,000 a month. Uh, it's my local currency, $12,000 Singapore dollars, which is about 9000 US, right? A very good salary, by the way. In today's market, it's a very good salary to have. It's a very comfortable salary. Not, not very good, but it's comfortable. And under ideal situation and with the growing demand, if say companies are not so fussy about it and they accepted my application at this point in time, I'm just putting it out there. I'm not saying that that is my expectation now, but but I know that my ideal market rate, professionally speaking, if to say tomorrow I land the, the ideal job for me, at this point in time with the, all the demand, I can get at least 15000 a month. Right, twelve to fifteen thousand a month. I mean that that's ideal uh, ideal situation, but we are not living in an ideal world right now, so have to be grounded and face the reality. So I reached a point where even though I know that there's a demand for talents in the tech industry and I'm like, you know, in a way when the pandemic started, if I'm being honest, I was kinda of like thanking the stars like like, you know, I was, uh, I studied tech and, you know, even though when I graduated and came out of the army looking for a job, the market was saturated back then, 2005. Um, it was tough finding jobs at the time. But then now, many years later, there's this demand and, and it's just exploded demand, you know. Uh, recently on the news, I one of the ministers were even talking about it, about uh, the, one of the, he's a previous minister, then he now was sort of, uh, I think he was put in to, to run the, our Singapore's uh, SPH, uh, the Singapore Press Company. I don't know the name now because they are, they are in a transition phase. So I think they, they might have some changes uh, to the name. But it's basically the company that uh, prints our news, right? So this minister that finally he retired as a minister now he goes into the private sector one of the things he said in his interview was i don't know it's an interview or speech now but but he said that you know we when it comes to digitization he talked about how the salary of technical folks like me the salary because of demand is now up meaning say Three years ago, if I can demand $12,000, right now I can demand $15,000. That is what he means. So in many ways, because of the pandemic, I was kind of like 
happy in the sense that that there is a growing demand because demand means better salary, better pay. We can ask for more. We can demand more. But I'm not even doing that right now, to be honest. I say, you know, I even applied for junior roles, right? Because when I try to apply for the roles that match my experience, my recognition, people shut the door on me right away because they think that I am not exactly a specialist. So then, so it's like, uh, okay, so if you think about the, the percentile, right? So if zero to 100%, like the very leadership type roles, when companies are trying to hire now, they are looking for like the specialists, like the, the 99th percent are on 91 to 100, you know, they are looking for the best of the best. Then um, when it comes to like junior roles, anybody that has many years of experience is automatically disqualified because they were overqualified. So uh, yeah, I know it's so contradicting. It just didn't make sense to me. So yeah, anyway, uh, that's my point that I want to make to, to companies and recruiters. Like, uh, you can complain all you want about the huge demand for talent and you can't fill your positions. But when people like me with more than enough experience decide that we, we want that job and you turn, it, turn us down, it just doesn't make sense to me. So, um, so yeah, I'm frustrated. To be honest, I'm, I'm really frustrated about this. And I just want to get it out there. 